feature from Antonio Campos who made After School and also um, was involved with uh, Martha Marcy May Marlene, which featured Brady Corbett, who stars here. So the story is essentially Simon, who is this American graduate who's broken up with his girlfriend and is now uh, freewheeling, slightly out of control, ends up in France, in Europe, on the continent, and uh, hangs around in search of himself, in search of thrills, in search of romance, in search of essentially what happens is he goes to a singles bar where he meets an escort with whom he immediately strikes up a relationship. He thinks she could make more money by blackmailing her clients. Yeah, da, 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 da. It's one of those films in which it's described in the press notes as a deeply disturbing character study. And it it's not... The, the and problem it with it, Well, here's a, let me play a very quick clip. Here is a clip. And what are you studying? French literature. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, what period? Middle Age and Renaissance. Wow. Mm -hmm. And you, what are you studying? Uh, I graduated earlier this year, actually, but I was studying neuroscience. Mm -hmm. My focus at school was the relationship between the eye and the brain. My thesis project was about peripheral vision. Peripheral vision. So there's an awful lot of discussion about the relationship between the eye and the brain. Now, here's my feeling. When a character in a movie tells you that their thesis is on uh, the relationship between the eye and the brain, that is the way of the filmmaker flagging up, saying, significant, hello, watching cinema, this is about the relationship between the eye and the brain. It was one of those films in which he does a, a very good, unpleasant performance. I mean, this, the central character, who is the kind of the sociopath, psychopath in the making, uh, is played yuckily by Brady Corbett, and I, his company was thoroughly unenjoyable, which which it's meant to be. I think the problem with the film is that it has more of a sense of its own importance than it really knows what to deal with. And in the end, there are moments in it which are gripping, but an awful, equally an awful lot of self-indulgence. But, you know, hats off to Brady Corbett for being genuinely one of the most loathsome screen presences I can remember in a very long time, intentionally so.